and give subscribe to the 13 Mitigator Ford Fusion. I'd like to well, thank you for listening to Let's Talk Racing.tv. Let's Talk Racing. I'm Teddy Peter, driver of the number 17 Toyota NASCAR Camp World Truck Series, and you're listening to Let's Talk Racing. <laughs>
Well, put it this way. Half the folks think it's none of our business. The other half think, well, we should write about it. Well, is it any different, as somebody told me today, is it any different if two drivers on track are drive for the same owner? I mean, if Tony Stewart and Ryan Newman get in a dust up, uh, do they, does it become, you know, a big deal to them or is it just a racing deal? And somebody said, well, the difference here is that uh, she's driving a Chevrolet running for rookie. He's driving a Ford running for rookie. Their, their relationship probably, we can hope so, their relationship is different than Stewart and Newman and Gordon and Johnson and Kane and Earnhardt Jr. Their relationship is different from a couple of guys racing each other. So I, I guess in that respect, it is the public's business because it might impact the racing. But on the other hand, it's not our business. So I don't know. It'll be, let me tell you what, it'll be a big story all year. Oh, yeah. We will not be able to get away from it until they, if they wreck each other or if something happens, you know, it's, it's going to be with us from the rest of the year. It's and the year hasn't even started yet. Right. So that's all I know about that. Well, I mean, uh, did uh, uh, Roger uh, no, Elton Sawyer and his yeah, his yeah, wife Elton and Patty were raced against each other, not 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 long, not often, but a little bit. And of course, the scrutiny back then that was gosh, twenty six seven years ago, because mm -hmm. they got married before, right before I did, and I've been married twenty five. So that's that's 26 or 7 years ago, and I don't know that it was nearly the number of hours on racing then as there are now. There wasn't any internet, there wasn't any instant Instagram stuff. It's an altogether different world now. Yeah, the Facebooks and the Twitters. Oh, yeah. I it, mean... It just that, blew up Twitter. It blew, it blew Twitter to the other side of the moon and back. So. Now, but now look at the whole new thing. If they have a spat... Rolls over onto the track. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. It, it's different for them than it would be for any two male drivers driving for the same team owner. And the fact that they drive for different owners makes it in different manufacturers makes it even more interesting. And he's a way better driver than she oh, is. Yeah. Okay. They, they may not. They, they, you know, they may not. <laughs> excuse me. They may not be up within. A half a mile of each other on the racetrack after races really get going good, so it may come to nothing. And that's all I know about that. One of our previous uh, call-ins got a sponsor, six, a sponsor for six races. Dinger. JJ. Oh, hey, JJ. Yeah, that's right, JJ. Saw that too. That, that's good that he got that coming along. Still got to get the results for him from the test in mm -hmm. the wind tunnel too. That's Jack's fourth. He's not supposed to know who. Oh. Is, I was told him earlier it's going to be a surprise when I get the two of them together. Oh, oh JJ Yelly? No. Oh. <laughs> now you'll have to go back and watch the show to see what he said. Oh, okay. I don't know. <laughs> or they listen to what he said anyway. And the other thing that came out of the media tour last week was the, the undeniable fact and there's no way to get around it. NASCAR is, is marketing this Gen 6 car like it's the greatest thing since sliced bread. They absolutely are trying to convince everybody that this car will bring enough excitement back, it'll bring fans back, it'll bring interest back, everybody will see that a Chevrolet looks like a Chevrolet, and a Ford looks like a Ford, and a Toyota looks like a Toyota. It'll be, it'll, it'll allegedly, supposedly, will bring back the fans who said, all those car tomorrow cars all look just alike. Which they did to some extent. Yeah. So NASCAR is pushing hard, promoting these things like, like their life depends on it. And, you know, maybe it does. I don't know. Do you think do you think they're gonna lose a lot of the Dodge fans? 
Now that how many Dodge fans were there anyway? You know, I mean, Keselowski fans will still be right. pulling for him. Yeah. Um, it's like a. You know, I mean, how many Almondinger? How many Kurt Busch fans were out there when he drove a Dodge? How many Almondinger fans were there when he drove? And how many Hornish? <laughs> yeah, how many Hornish fans were out there when he drove? So, you know, I think when Richard Petty left Dodge as a driver, not as an owner, but as a driver, when Petty left Dodge, it pretty much that. And then Everham came in, and Elliott drove one for a while, won a few races, won the yeah. backyard, I believe. Yes, sir. But I don't. I just don't think Dodgers had. They they did not have the marketing, or, or the PR or the media resources to put at promoting that brand. So mm-hmm. I don't think anybody will miss them. Oh, news for for everybody. We're going to be hopefully getting an app set up so they that everybody can watch it on their phones as well at the show. What's an app? I'm not, I'm not familiar with all this. News. I it means use a it's a it's a it's a tel- it's a cell phone application that you can download into your cell phone, and it will allow you to be able to watch the show. So we say, but not on a phone like this. Not the uh, Star Trek. No, not, not on not on a not the beam me up Scotty phone now. One version. Oh, okay. We're, we're talking. You know, it's time for you to do an upgrade. What are called smartphones? Smartphones. Yep. Let's see. They're right off the bat. I'm out of. Out of my league. Oh, uh, come on. You're a smart guy. Yeah. Is that rotary dial on that phone? No, I mean, but it, it, I wish it did. It'd be easier to dial. But, uh, <laughs> Maybe they have a hookup for that. Yeah. They have an old app for yeah. him. <laughs> old apps. Yeah, one, that, that would be something neat somebody yeah. should do. I know we're way off target here, but being in the computer biz, all that stuff. Have an app so that you have a phone so it acts like an old one for you. That'd be nice. You just dial the, yeah. dial the number. Yeah. Okay. I mean, they do some crazy things with these things nowadays. So, what else? Uh, what else is kicking out there? Well, that was it. The media tour was basically two storylines: Danica and Ricky, and uh, the Gen Six car. I find it interesting that they that they have a a Gen Six car, but they never had a Gen Five car. Yeah, yeah. I or mean, Gen Four. Where did all of a sudden the Gen Six one. come in from? You know. Yeah, they it sound better. I guess it does. It's it, exactly yeah. right. It's it's a again. I go back to the same word. It's so such a dirty word to some people. It's a marketing deal. You know, you give you give young fans the idea. Okay, we're we're Generation X or we're Generation Y or whatever young fans are now. They're Generation something. And and they talk about well now they've got a Gen Six car, that's 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 what we got we got to go see that we got to go see why it's such a different car from everything else so they're hoping it'll attract people in and they're hoping that once they get them in they'll keep them in so I don't know it's like Hall of Fame induction February eighth yeah yeah Herb Thomas uh, Buck Baker Buck Baker. Scott Le- Owens, Leonard, Leonard Wood, Woods, and Rusty. And Rusty. Rusty. I don't, you know, Rusty's just... Rusty shouldn't be there yet. Too early. Let him tackle in another 20 years. Well, even another five years would be fine. But I just, you know, there are other drivers who did it a long time before he did and and contributed way more than he did. But, you know, that's, that's it's politics. Bigger. Go ahead. Let's talk racing. Uh, hi, this is Hunter Smith. Hunter, what's going on? Not much. How are you? All right. We were just running through some of the racing news and uh, going over a lot of the scuttlebutt that's kicking around. Anything new you want to throw out there? Um, yeah, there's a few uh, new things this year that we're uh, we're ready to go with. A few changes to our racing schedule. Um, as far as NASCAR and all that goes. I'm excited. I've been watching the watching the show the past few minutes, and I see the Danica Ricky thing uh, got a lot of publicity from you guys. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a good uh, crash, wouldn't it? So uh, that'll be interesting. I'm anxious to see how that goes. Uh, I hope they don't get into each other on the track, and then that can spew into some domestic violence. But well, those cops there at the track. Yeah, they, <laughs> I, uh, they might need to need some cops. I hear Danica's got some got some claws. Ooh. 
So, uh, Hunter, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, well, I am 17 years old. I'm from Sussex, New Jersey. Um, not a real popular place for race car drivers to be born out of. <laughs> um, I've been racing since 2009. Uh, started off in go-karts and uh, running uh, dirt stock cars right now. And um, hoping to make something of myself and be the next, uh, the next Brad Kidlowski or Jimmy Johnson, hopefully. So, uh, what's, what's, uh, what's your home track up there? Uh, up here, there's, unfortunately, there's no track in New Jersey that we run at. Mm -hmm. um, my home track would be in Pennsylvania, Borders Speedway. It's a uh, uh, one-seventh mile paved oval and kind of like a Martinsville, very uh, uh, paperclip-like. Um, so we ran out there uh, a lot last year and did really good, so uh, I consider that my home track. Out in uh, Sailorsburg, Pennsylvania. I'm reading up on it, so y'all keep talking. <laughs> trying to figure out. What's with this website, collegecomplete.com slash hunter? Is that a place where you keep your racing stuff at? Uh, no, that was actually uh, last year, and I had a, uh, I had a affiliation with College Complete, and uh, if that sounds familiar, they sponsored Justin Lofton in the, uh, the Camping World Truck Series last year. And uh, that was just the way I'm really big with education. Uh, that always comes first. Uh, my parents always instilled in me that uh, have your education, have a backup just in case the racing, racing thing doesn't pan out. Um, so we kind of hooked up last year just to spread the word about education and uh, help kids go to college and exceed in what they want to do education-wise. Cool. Now, what uh, can people find you on some of the social media networks out there? Oh yeah, I am. I am addicted to Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. I'm all over there. I love interacting with fans and hearing what everyone else has to say and uh, seeing what everybody else is racing. I think it's great. Uh, Twitter, you can you can go follow me at Mister Underscore Hunter Smith, and Instagram's the same username. Uh, Facebook, you can go like my page, add me, add me as a friend. Uh, I love hearing from fans and building my building myself and. Uh, creating a fan base of my own starting young and I hope uh, hopefully it pans out and everybody can follow me when uh, when I make it big so to speak so uh, anybody in your family raced or is it something you just started nope I am actually the first generation racer in my family um, my grandparents were big on baseball football and um, my parents were growing up that way and uh, we became racing fans. Uh, my father got me into racing just because he was a big Dale Earnhardt fan in, through the 80s and the 90s. And uh, I've been a fan ever since I was born, and uh, anything with wheels really has been my life. So I, we got the opportunity in 2009 to uh, buy a go-kart, and it's, the rest is history. So. Good deal. Um, I see you. Your car is number 30. Is that your, your favorite number, or is that just something that you just choose? Uh, my previous, in my ever since I started racing, my number was actually number 7. Huh. And this year, I'm actually uh, campaigning for uh, cancer and multiple sclerosis. And uh, the 30 represents the 30 million people worldwide suffering with cancer and multiple sclerosis. Um, I've lost two grandparents to cancer, and my... Uh, my great aunt, who I'm really close with, she uh, has MS, and I see her struggle with it uh, every day. And uh, I just want to do my part in helping out with that, and maybe raise some money throughout the year, hold some charity stuff, and just do my part to help. Good deal. Now, I'm I'm trying to figure out why this young man has not mentioned the name Martin Truex Jr. yet. <laughs> if, if he's from New Jersey, Martin and Ryan, Ryan Truex too. He's a coming up through the Nationwide Series. I, they're from a little bit further south than where I live. They're about two hours from where I am. They're, uh, they're central New Jersey, but uh, yeah, they're, they're from New Jersey, that's true, but... Uh, wouldn't, that, wouldn't that make you automatically the, your, your favorite drivers? If, if those two guys are kind of laying down the path that you'd like to follow, I would think you'd jump on their bandwagon. Oh, uh, believe me, I follow Truex and uh, the whole Mar uh, Michael Waltrip team just because of the whole New Jersey thing. Ryan Truex, I support him a lot, and I making a name for New Jersey. I think that's cool because we don't have much to be named for. <laughs> now, what what part of Jersey are you from again? 
we're, I'm in Sussex, Swanage, New Jersey. We're up uh, right where Pennsylvania, New York, and New Jersey meet. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, we're about as far north in New Jersey as you can get. Near the Delaware Water Gap? I am about 45 minutes from the Delaware Water Gap. Okay, I know where you are. You're in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Is that near that Cape May Ferry or something like no, that? No, Cape uh, May Rogers. Is that the other no. end? Too much info. You, you, don't, you don't know nothing about New Jersey. <laughs> I've you, driven up that way. I just remember that there's a Cape May Ferry or somewhere up there. State. Um, now, the nearest racetrack to you of any size, I assume, would be Pocono. Yep, we've been to Pocono multiple times. It's uh, about an hour from us. Okay, okay. There used to be, back before you were probably born, they used to run modifieds on the little infield course. I think they used to have the Race of Champions there. Oh, okay. They had something called the Race of Champions, and it was sort of an all-star northeastern modified type deal where... Richie Evans and Charlie Jerzonback and Jerry Cook and all those guys and, and um, Tommy Baldwin Sr., all those guys raced there. Um, and, and I always thought that almost everybody from New Jersey would rather be an open wheel driver or a sprint car driver or an Indy car driver than a, a stock car driver. Well, IndyCar is definitely my goal. Uh, it's funny you say that. Um, open wheel is the direction I would like to take. I mean, um, one of my uh, idols in in racing in general is um, is Ryan Hunter Ray, the 2012 IndyCar champion, mm -hmm. and I would love to be able to follow in his footsteps and just uh, be the have the career that he has. Well, if you can follow an IndyCar driver, you might as well just go for AJ Ford and get it over with, you know. Yeah, I, yeah. Uh, the Ford you know. name is uh, big in our house too. I mean, uh, just anything open wheel. I mean, we—that's our biggest. I think uh, my biggest fan. I'm a fan of IndyCar. Uh, like I said, that's my goal. Uh, hopefully, I can get there someday with uh, running for a team like Andretti or Penske. That's that's some of the ultimate dream. Okay. Yeah, I notice. I notice now. Now you're you're what you're seventeen. I'm seventeen. Yep. Okay. A couple, three years older than you are is um, John Andretti's son, whose name is Jarrett, is going to spend the entire summer, the spring and summer, racing open wheel midgets and sprint cars and all up in uh, Indiana. Okay. And, and he is a college student. He goes to goes to NC State, and I think he probably takes off the spring semester and races into the spring and into the summer. Um, and I think I think what John Andretti feels like is that with his name, that his kid would be a whole lot closer to getting an Indy 500 ride or an Indy car ride than he would a, a NASCAR ride. So at some point in time, you're not much younger than than John Andretti's kid. At some point in time, you guys may be racing each other, open wheel up in Indiana on a Friday night somewhere, and you know. That couldn't be a all I hope so. I mean, just being on the same track as someone with the name Andretti would be an honor to me, and um, that's just that would be really cool. Oh, and like I like you said, all, all the young kids coming through, and uh, you never know who you you're gonna be racing against in in the coming years. Yeah. Well, you said you said you're a first generation racer. Uh, how's your family feel about that? Uh, say that again. Miss uh, that. You said you're a first generation racer. Um, How's your family uh, feel about that? Oh, my family's extremely supportive of this. We, it's been in our minds throughout our whole lives. I'm, uh, I mean, growing up, uh, racing was our life. It, it's kind of what brings us together. I mean, until I was 13, I didn't, I didn't drive race cars, and um, but we would still every Sunday and uh, for the Cup races and the Indy car races, we were watching it on TV or listening to it on the radio or something and like I said it, it brings us together and now that we're actually doing it and since 2009 we feel that bond even more and uh, racing is that like I said that one thing that holds our family together and it's a, a big time family thing we all enjoy it we all enjoy going to the track and uh, packing up the night before putting a car in a trailer and uh, going through all the 
normal uh, procedures that a race team does, and uh, it just it's what brings us together and keeps us a family. <laughs> Good deal. You know, I'm, I'm looking at something here on the website called the uh, the NASCAR Corner. It's got a story about you, and it mentions that that you have taken certain habits or certain things that drivers do and kind of embrace them for your own. And it says here that you do something that I think is very important. You take off your sunglasses when you're doing media interviews. That is correct. Now, other than Carl Edwards, who taught you to do that? Um, believe it or not, it was Carl Edwards. Okay. And no one really mentioned that to me. I just, uh, through seeing his interviews on ESPN and Speed and whatnot, uh, and I know, I think it maybe one of the broadcasters, whether it was Kyle Petty or Darrell Walter, somebody had mentioned that, oh, uh, that the media really appreciates that and it's a really respectful thing. And ever since I heard one of the uh, reporters say that, I just, it clicked and I just, ever since I do it. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll t as a longtime reporter, and I've been doing this for a long time, I don't want to tell you when I covered my first race. <laughs> but it was when it was I'll tell you when it was it was the Sunday that Dover Downs opened the first time oh. so we're talking when you when your probably your father was a child anyway mm -hmm. I've been doing this a long time and the thing to me is that when you when you talk to a man from behind sunglasses and he cannot see your eyes he has no idea whether you're lying or telling the truth exactly and and if you if you try to do an interview and you keep your sunglasses on, the writer's going to probably assume that you're telling him the truth, that you didn't hit that guy on purpose, or you weren't really cheating, or whatever it is. But if you've got your sunglasses on and he can't tell, he's going to walk away thinking, you know, I'm not sure about that kid. If you take him off and look him in the eye, you'll, you'll win him over 99% of the time. So that's that's a that's a good habit to have, and obviously signing autographs. Uh, it's like Richard Petty told me one time. I asked him about signing. He said, "You know, some cat might have a thousand of mine, but the guy beside him may not have any, and I've got to treat them both the same. I've, I've got to sign the autograph for the guy who's got a thousand already, with the same intensity and the same flourish." I do for the guy who's getting his first one, because you never know which is which. So exactly. I mean, you never. I, I heard Richard Petty say at one point he never turned down an autograph, and I've heard stories that he would sit in the garage area for hours and hours after the race was over signing autographs, and I, 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 that instilled in me as well. Just yep. you never turn down a fan, it, you know. Well, like you said, without them, I'd be plowing cotton somewhere or fixing cars that are at a gas station, so that's two pretty good guys to learn from, Edwards and Petty. Big time. All right, Hunter, uh, hate to let you go, but we, uh, we'd like to do uh, the thanks some of your sponsors and um, wrap it up. Yeah, um, um, hopefully you guys can follow me this year, like I said, uh, Twitter and Instagram, at under, uh, Mr. Underscore Hunter Smith. Uh, that's where you're going to get a lot of the info of um, what I'm doing and what we're doing here at uh, Hunter Smith Racing. Um, our sponsors, I'd like to thank Farmstead, Country Club, and Golf Course, uh, Ag Choice, uh, EVS Sports, Amsoil, K1 Race Gear, and Power Miss Racing Fuel. Uh, you guys can uh, check me out in the Tobias Slingshot All-Star National Series this year. Um, and like I said before, we're going to be running for uh, running in honor of all the cancer patients and the MS patients. So. Uh, this is their car this year with the 30, the 30 million people suffering with MS and cancer. Uh, we're doing it for them, so hopefully we can uh, pull out a few wins this year, maybe a championship, and go from there. Good deal. We'll be rooting for you. Awesome. Thank you very much, guys. I appreciate it. Have a good night. You too. Bye. Bye. Good kid. Sounds like it. Mm -hmm. What you got, Raj? Just waiting on uh, our next guest to call in, Christopher Hogan. Christopher Hogan. Now we're getting even younger. 13-year-old, legend driver. Now where's this kid from? He is from... 
Somewhere around down in the uh, Texas area, it looks like. Let's see here. Woodlands, Texas. Woodland, Texas. Yeah. If you check your screen, you already got all his awards up there. <laughs> Ooh. Started in 2008. That was back in Bandolero Bandit. Mm. Well, might as well fill some space here. What about that Gen 6 card? <laughs> well, talk about filling space and look what happens. Let's talk racing. Hello. Hello? Christopher? Yeah. Hey, what's going on? Uh, nothing. Nothing? Why not? Why not? <laughs> well, other than talking to y'all. Uh, that's always a good thing. Yeah. Maybe we'll get working on that race car. Yeah, I got home and I didn't have any homework, so I went out and worked on my race car, and we got done with that just in time. Good deal. So, uh, Christopher, tell us a little bit about yourself, where you got started. Um, I got started, um, because my mom, we were at a, um, NASCAR race in 2005 at Texas Motor Speedway, and my mom is, was always a big Tony Stewart fan, and she was reading um, his book called True Speed, and um, in there he talks about racing go-karts as a kid and how he got started, and so my mom looked up kids racing, and she found out about quarter midgets, which are like miniature midget cars, and she found two tracks in Texas, one in San Antonio and one in Austin. And so they found some used one online, and we bought them, and we started racing. Good deal. So uh, how old are you? I'm 13. 13, getting started early. Well, mm -hmm. good deal. So, I should have been on this five. Okay. So it uh, looks like you got some bandoleros under your belts, and now you're running Legends? Yep. So what, uh, what uh, say you live in Texas? That's a look, good deal. Uh, what's uh, what track you run out there? Uh, we run at Houston Motorsports Park. We run at Texas Motor Speedway on both the quarter mile and the fifth mile. Um, we run a lot in Monroe at Revolution Raceway Park, and we have run over to Alabama um, for some races at um, Sunny South Raceway. Right. And then we went up to Atlanta for the Legends Nationals last year. Well, Roger, if you're watching our live stream, uh, Roger put up a special guest behind me, a cardboard cutout of Tony Stewart. I don't know why, because he heard that name. <laughs> so I'm, a to I'm a Tony Stewart fan. What do you expect? <laughs> My problem is it's cutting off his head. <laughs> oh, well. So um, who do you follow in the um, NASCAR series? Um, we're big fans of Dale Earnhardt Jr., Tony Stewart, and Casey Kane. Good deal. So, did you hear the big news about uh, Stenhouse and Danica Patrick? No, sir. Oh, they're a couple now. <laughs> what do you think about that? That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Have you why, had a why are you not a fan of, of uh, Bobby Labonte, who is from Texas? Yeah, I'm a fan of him too. He just doesn't race a lot much anymore. Well, Bobby races. Tom, uh, his brother doesn't. Okay. Uh, and I guess growing up in Texas, AJ Ford's got to be kind of a hero. Yes, very much so. It's not too bad. Being as young as you are, have you had anybody approach you yet from the big teams? Uh, I didn't catch that. What'd you say? Uh, uh, since your age, uh, have you, have you, uh, any of the, um, excuse me, any of the big teams contacted you yet? Uh, no, not at all so far. Um, we've just been running off of my parents' budget, so we're budget racers, and my mom has her own, um, company that she sponsors me with, so. Good deal. So what's the number one, 81 for? Is that a special number, or? Well, whenever I got my second quarter midget, it has a tiny little number 81 on the back of it. And so we just left it on the car because 
red was my favorite color, and that's the color of the car, and we didn't want to ruin the paint job or anything, so we just left it on there, and so I've just carried that number on with me to the Bandoleros, and now on to the Legend. So what else do you do instead of racing? Do you do anything? Um, I help my dad set up a Legend, or some Bandoleros for some other kids, uh -huh. and I help mentor them at the racetrack. Um, I work on my car a lot. I help, I mean, I play trumpet at my school. Good deal. And I've never had a lesson. I'm self-taught. And I just, I like watching, like, shows like Top Gear, and I like watching NASCAR. So you like Rutledge Wood, eh? Yeah. <laughs> oh, he is a trip. I've talked to him a few times. I'm sure Al has, too. <laughs> He's crazy. <laughs> well, I was trying to be nice. No, he's what crazy. It, Rick? He's crazy. Do your do your parents? I'm I'm curious as to whether kids racing at your age, um, whether the parent whether your parents are reluctantly supportive or are they completely supportive or does it kind of depend on how you're running that particular night? No, they're very supportive. Um, they're the ones who got me started in it in the first place anyway, so. Oh, okay. They understand that we're wearing full head-to-toe gear anyway, so there's really not a lot of ways that you can get hurt. Uh, did, uh, oh, excuse me. Uh, did your, any of your family members ever race before? Nope, just, I'm first generation. Good deal. Another one. Another one. The guy before you was first generation as well. Yeah, I heard that. Have you given yourself any sort of um, schedule or timetable that, okay, by the age of 18, I want to be doing this. By 21, I want to have my first, you know, truck ride. By 23, I want to be a nationwide. Have you, have you set up any kind of a, of a schedule of where you'd like to be down the road? Um, we'd like to try and give me some dirt experience, um, even if it's just a little bit. I would basically race anything if given the opportunity, and I'd like to get a pro late model soon so I can start racing at Five Flag Speedway in Pensacola, Mobile, South Alabama, and in Kyle, Texas, and at Central Texas Speedway, and just to eventually get into NASCAR and start racing there. So your ultimate goal is to go up to uh, Sprint Cup in the big series, huh? Yes, sir. Good deal. And you started at the little track at, at TMS in Fort Worth at Texas Motor Speedway? I actually started here in Houston in the Bandos, but oh, okay. first started in the quarter midgets at San Antonio. Oh, okay. Because I know the I know the track owner or the track general manager in Texas most through Eddie Gossage. Uh, I didn't know whether your racing had ever brought you into contact with, with uh, Eddie Gossage at the Speedway there. He, I don't know if he goes to the the dirt track out behind the back stretch or not. I imagine he does. But um, if you run into him, be careful. That's all I'm going to say. Be careful. I will. What, uh, as far as the, uh, have you ever, oh, I know what it was, I wanted to ask you, have you ever met Robert Richardson that runs in the Nationwide Series? Um, not personally, but I was at the Texas Motor Speedway ban Banquet this year, because I was, um, top three, I think, yeah, top, I was third at, um, Texas Motor Speedway in points for the Summer Stampede, and we were watching the Texas, the, the truck race up in the Speedway Club, and Robert, Robert Richardson was up there. Ah, cool. He, he's a very nice driver. I've, he's a good friend of mine. And uh, did, you, did you get a chance to talk to him, or just that he was there? No, I didn't get a chance, but he was there. Get, it, get, it, get on Facebook and get him on one of your friends and get up with him. You never know what you can find out. Yeah, I'm already his friend on there, so... Ah. 
So how can uh, some of these uh, fans and some of these uh, owners try to find you? Like on Facebook, you got Twitter? I've got um, two websites, TeamHoganRacing.com and ChristopherHoganRacing.com. I'm on Twitter at CHOGAN81 and Team Hogan at Team Hogan Racing. And I'm on Facebook, Team Hogan Racing, Christopher Hogan Racing, and Christopher Hogan. And I was chosen by Destination Race Day to be one of their Young Hawk racers. And they will post results on in 2013 at nationracedaycom Awesome. Now, who, now who do you actually, you said your mother's work sponsors you. What's, what's, the, what's her job, what's her work company? Um, she does medical billing for doctors, and her company is called Bottom Line Billing. Cool. Anybody else you got on there as well, or is she the only one? She's the only one. So what does your girlfriend think of your racing? She thinks it's awesome. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> she go travel around with you, or? No. How can you have a girlfriend at 13? <laughs> I, that's way beyond. I mean, Al, they would at thirteen for us. They wouldn't even barely let us out of the house, you know, oh other than gracious. go back and forth to school. Good gracious, it's pretty scary. Now, see, this kid's already ahead of me. He's got a girlfriend, and he races at thirteen. And, and when I was thirteen, I was riding a bicycle and playing stickball, you know. <laughs> but you know, it's it's all the food they feed everybody nowadays. It's all those. Uh, chemicals they add in they yeah. make you mature quicker and you know how it is well a kid a, ho a son a kid yeah he's 13 a kid I hope you do well thank you I will expect to see you in Daytona Beach in about five years in a say a nationwide car hopefully that, that sound pretty good yeah okay or possibly some Arco running you can do Arco you can run the back stretch you can run the little track at the back stretch at Daytona. Yeah. The four tenths mile track. That's true. Get him a K and N ride. There you go. Get a K and N ride out there. Have you had a chance okay. to? <laughs> oh, we already talked about that one. Duh. Yeah. Um, what else can you tell us about yourself? We haven't talked about. Um. Well, I start. I started at five, of course, and. Uh, we traveled around with quarter midgets basically anywhere. We went to Topeka, Kansas, Tulsa, Oklahoma, and Phoenix, Arizona. And then once I got into the Vandaleros at eight, I raced them for four years. I won a championship at eight at Houston Motorsports Park in 2009. I won a championship at Thunder Hill in 2011 at Kyle, and in 2011, I was the Texas state champion in the, at, from Texas. And then in, I started in the Legends at 12, and I finished second in points at, in 2012 overall in the Young Lions at Texas Motor Speedway. And I was the uh, Houston Motorsports Park Rookie of the Year, and I finished third in points overall at Houston Motorsports Park. Now, how many times have you raced at Texas Motor Speedway? About how many trips have you made over there? I've been racing the Bandoleros for four years and the Legend for one. And we do about 10 summer stampede races. Plus hey, Bobby, how you doing? Races. So about 20 a year, so maybe 100 times. Wow. Little 13 -year -old you ever been to a place called Babes? <laughs> it's a fried <laughs> chicken place okay. in Roanoke, Texas. All right, stand by. When you, when you come out the racetrack, and you turn left on route, I think 115. You go to a little town called Roanoke. We got a they got an old timey fried chicken place called Babes. Yeah, we'll have to the, try that next time we go. The, the, I'm serious. I'm serious. The next time you go to Texas Motor Speedway, ask how to get to Babes. Okay, you, you I will. Absolutely, will never forget it. It's great. Not as good as In and Out Burger, but it's it's pretty good. <laughs> All right, that's all I'm going to say about that. Yeah, we went to another restaurant in Roanoke last time we were up there, and they had really, really good burgers. Yeah. You go to Babes, and you'll never forget it. All right, Chris, uh, get, uh, 
give us, uh, your sponsors a shout out one more time and uh, we'll let you off here and have a good night. Well, I'd like to thank my mom and her little company and my dad for uh, helping work on my car and being my crew chief. And I'd like to thank Buddy Gowdy and Cherokee Racing who have helped set up my car a lot. And they, they've helped me get to where I'm at in the legend. Good deal. And we would be lost. Tell your dad to keep up with us so we know what's going on and get you back on the show again. Okay. Bye right now. All right, bye. Have, Thank you. Have a good night. Go to babes. <laughs> <laughs> hit speaker. Speaker. Now push the other line. Uh -huh. Hit speaker. Say hi, Bobby. Let's talk racing. Hello. Bobby. Yes, sir. How's it going? Good. Turning left. Oh, I'm trying to. <laughs> Is that working good for you? He's still there. He's still there? I'm here, yeah. Okay. I don't want to have technical difficulties. I'm um, two for two already. Well, it sounds like you're, like you're in a bit of a uh, echo chamber for, you know, well, that's probably because we do use a uh, speakerphone system for talking to you guys, so it might sound like that. And it doesn't help when I'm on the other side of the room. Yeah, it sounds like you're on the other side of the room, correct. <laughs> correct. <laughs> well, that's because I am. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, why don't you give us a quick rundown about your racing resume and uh, tell us how you got into racing and what you're up to lately and what you're hoping to get into later on. Well, I, um, well, I started racing 35 years ago um, in Central PA. My dad, very successful in the area, is a modified racer. Um, naturally, I mean, I was exposed to it as a, a very, uh, very young kid and uh, just got in my blood early and, and uh, I started racing on you know, on entry-level tracks, I actually started in a in a street stock class in Central PA here, and uh, moved up, did some modified racing, and uh, but I think at an early age, I, I I thought I was gonna take a serious stab at um, you know at a stock car career, and I I got in my first stock car in, um, in about 1983, ran some uh, actually ran some Winston Cup races, and. Uh, you know, at that point in time, there really was not another way to do it. And I don't know that there still is today, but uh, it's just um, kind of read the cards that I had to deal with and moved on from there. In 88, I moved into the, uh, the ARCA series and have been, you know, competing there since. Um, this year, we're, uh, we're going to run a limited uh, number of Arca Speedway and nationwide uh, NASCAR events, so I'm pretty excited about the year. Bobby, is it difficult to think back on all of your Daytona wins and pick one or maybe two that stand out over all the others? Yeah, or, I think. Or, uh, okay. The one that's pretty. I think the one that's the most special um, was 2002. Um, kind of a, a little sentimental. My um, goes back in even to the days of my dad's career. My dad raced at a variety of different racetracks across the East Coast, and one particular track that just seemed like every time he, I would go as a youngster, his car would break or he either have rotten luck, and he not only wouldn't win, but he wouldn't run good, and and just wasn't a happy. Uh, Happy evening. So I decided that I was probably a jinx, and I stayed away. And, uh, but anyway, one night, and this was Penn National Speedway, but this one night I stuck back in somebody else's car, and nobody knew I was even there. And, and um, my dad put a whooping on him, and, and it was pretty neat. I ended up being in victory lane there, and I still have a picture of it to this day. But, but my dad went through many, many years of watching, you know, the lackluster performances that we had, and I wouldn't call them lackluster completely, but we just had, you know, bad track position, not real good racing luck. Uh, things just didn't go away for a long time, and I think he, 
I think he left, you know, maybe thinking he might have been a jinx. We won in 99. He wasn't there. Um, he came back. He was there in 2000, and uh, we, we missed it by a couple feet. And I think that sewed it up for him. He thought he was a jinx. So, But anyway, he snuck down there in 2002 and didn't tell anybody he was there and only came on pit road after the green flag dropped. And, and we ended up in victory lane and, and saw him there. It was a pretty neat deal. Yeah. So 2002 was probably one of the best. Okay, but but basically they're all pretty special down there, aren't they? Oh, naturally. I mean, uh, look, uh, I think any racer would tell you that that you really never never look back too much. We're always trying to look forward. Always always working on what we're going to do next. And and uh, I don't know. I don't get too caught up in 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 actually thinking about it too one. Too, you know, too much. I mean, we've had track's been really good to me. We've had a lot of luck there. We've had, we've had, um, I certainly had some success. Uh, I think I think about the ones that slipped away more than I do the ones we won. To be honest with you, we. Now let me ask you about that. I've I've been covering motorsports as a journalist now for over forty years, and and I've I've seen you race at Daytona and Talladega and Pocono and everywhere else, and and. Almost every driver I've ever interviewed or talked with say that the races that they should have won but didn't stay with them more than the ones that they won and maybe shouldn't have. Oh, absolutely. Now, why, why, now I'm not a racer. Nobody in this room is a racer. We don't understand that. Why is it that the ones that get away stick with you more than the ones that you, that you get? Well, only because I think it's it's harder on you when you put everything together, and um, you know, for example, in in um, and actually in 2000 uh, there was a big scoring mix-up, and um, we actually had a lot on the field due to gas mileage, and until they got it straightened out, we ended up ninth instead of leading the race, and only worked my way back to second. It was alongside the leader. I thought that was one that got away in 2003. And we really had them covered, and and um, not real long to go in the race, and dominated that thing, and was actually just for the probably the only time I was really playing with the guys, and got a left rear flat tire, and uh, you know those <laughs> those things are hard to take. They're just really, really hard on take because you know it, it's out of your control, and. You know, the rest of the stuff you think as a racer, man, I could have done this better, I could have done this better, but when they're out of your control and they're taken from you like that, why, it, uh, <laughs> it's just hard to take. And you think about them a lot. Yeah. S several years ago, I did a story for Auto Week magazine, which is my primary employer right now, and I wrote that the, that the ARCA champion, whoever he was or has been, is probably a far more versatile driver than the NASCAR champion, because your guy, because you and your your series run everything from Daytona and Talladega down to half mile dirt tracks. I know you run Springfield, but y'all have to run on tracks that are so dramatically different one from another each week that you've got to be far more talented probably than a Cup driver. Um, I just think it puts, uh, first of all, it's a great series for a kid to come into to learn because of the diversity of the tracks. Uh, the unfortunate thing that's happened is you're on so many different tracks and you have so many different applications for race cars. The, the minute they've gone to radial tires, it's just been a big game changer almost at every different track. And, you know, you just, you certainly can't take a, you know, you certainly can't take a super speedway car to a place like Toledo mm -hmm. and <laughs> not a road course or, or not the dirt. So, you know, to do this and go up to the championship right as the years progressed, it's actually become a lot more expensive to try to chase a championship and run all these different venues. And, you know, I, I, I've tried in a few years. Our, our best swing at the thing was uh, finishing second. I believe in 2006, and we came back and thought we had a good, real good shot to win the championship in 07, and was in a pretty bad wreck at Pocono, and boy, that knocked me out of the car for the rest of the year, and and I've been fortunate enough just to be able to come back, but uh, 
you know, it's a neat deal. You get a chance to go to a lot of different types of racetracks, and it just makes you a well-rounded race driver. Is, is that more fun than looking at a cup schedule and thinking that, except for Watkins Glen and Sonoma, everything's an oval, um, the setup, you know, you, you take you take maybe within reason the same Charlotte setup to Atlanta, to Texas, to other places. When you guys go from Dayton or Talladega and you go back home and you start running, there used to be a track in Michigan, came Marne, M-A-R-N-E, was that, did y'all race there? Yeah, we did. We ran Berlin and... and okay, uh, okay. And that's a little track. That's, that's, and you run dirt tracks that nobody else runs. Springfield Mile. Um, absolutely. It, it must be fun to some extent to look forward to different challenges, even though it may be expensive. Well, it's extreme. It's extremely challenging, and and, and I think that's um, I think that's first of all is a, a double-edged sword for the series. It, it it brings a lot of different people in. You'll see a big rotation through a year's time of people that come and go, uh, and it's a it's a, certainly a neat deal to do. Unfortunately, it's become very very expensive to try to do this, given the fact that those ingredients are in place and the way everybody races today and if you're going to go to Daytona to win you're going to you're going to have to have a serious effort because there's a couple of us around that try to have our stuff pretty good and only because it's the biggest venue we go to we get the most exposure and and our sponsors you know want to run good there now you guys practice on Thursday qualifying practice on Friday and race on Saturday in what three weeks, two weeks, something like that. That's correct. But yours is a three-day show. Okay, at least you're not down there for ten or eleven days. Or, so it's um... actually this year I'll be bouncing back and forth. I'll probably leave Daytona, come back to Charlotte, and um, hopefully finish up my initial like car and and then uh, go back. I mean, we just got a lot of work to do, and I hope we can pull it off and get it done. I'd like to be in the Saturday Nationwide race, and we're just going to cross our fingers and hope everything works out. Oh, okay. So have you uh, done some testing down there at Daytona already? Just with the ARCA car, yes. Okay. Uh, how'd that go for you? Um, I don't know. I, um, I try not to get really caught up in, in what everybody else does, and okay. it's a hard thing to um, to really monitor because... There's a bunch of different agendas that go on at a test session, and and uh, the only thing that I can I really know is is really how fast we ran last year, and what all the data that we produce allows me to understand that we're going to run this year. And if we can reach that plateau, I think we'll be in pretty good shape, as been the case for the last maybe dozen years or so. And I think we're in a position to run well again. I think we've got. I think we've got things in line and, and got a you know got a good car and a good engine package and and we're not done yet. I mean we're we're uh, I'm actually leaving to go to Charlotte this evening and you know pick up the last uh, bits and pieces that I'm going to spend the weekend on my chassis dyno here and try to get a little bit more out of that and hopefully we'll come back with a little bit more than what we had. Um, did anything change from the arc cars from last year to this year? Yeah, they've uh, instituted some new rules, uh, which I haven't, you know, I've been real quiet about it. I haven't been a big fan of it. Right. Uh, given the fact that economically this thing is, is, is extremely hard to do right now for a, a lot of teams, including myself, um, I think any any rule change, uh, you know, given to a, given to a, a series that, 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 listen, relies on people take a lot of money out of the wallets to do this is is something that really needs to be d discussed and scrutinized to a point where where almost any change unless it's a safety change as far as i'm concerned not a good change mm -hmm. and you know it, it's added a lot of expense based on the fact that the minute you change any engine rules it just it just tosses a guy's program like mine in the toilet that's been a good program for a long time. And you spend a lot of money to try to get yourself back on top again. And, 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 and you know, given the fact that we're going to probably be the same speed that we were a year ago, 
doesn't add up to me. So pretty much saying that, I, I, I didn't understand why they were doing it and, and where we're going with this thing. But it is what it is. I don't make the rules. People a whole lot smarter than me do that. I try to just try to play the cards. Right. <clears throat> so going into Daytona this year, you feel any pressure to repeat to go for a ninth? Um, I, I didn't quite hear you. You broke up. What'd you say there? I said uh, going into Daytona this year, uh, you got you feeling any pressure to win a ninth one? Well, I've always put a lot of pressure on myself there. I, you know, I put a lot of pressure on myself and everybody around me, and and um, you know, all I can really do is, is is give myself the best opportunity to do it, and then. Uh, no, let it let it go to what see what comes out of it. It's it's been um fortunately we you know looking back on it we've had a great great run there. The place he gave me a great career, and uh, I really wouldn't I wouldn't have thought a long time ago I'd be going back at at 54 years old as not only the defending winner but the defending three time winner and going back for a ninth when I couldn't have. Could have never planned that, and um, I think it goes to the – says a lot about the people that have supported my organization for a long time. You know, we're, we're just sponsored by Lucas Oil for our ninth year. And, you know, when you put people like that and products together that come our way consistently change and get a little bit better, and, you know, you get guys that are serious about it and got to push the envelope a little bit, good things are going to happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the first thing that comes to my mind when I think of you is Lucas Oil. Anytime. Been a, they've been a great sponsor. It's been a great relationship. And I feel very proud to have a company, you know, an American company on board that that um, you know makes our products here in the United States and you know carries uh, you know carries the American flag. It's a pretty neat thing to be a part of, and and I think you know I, I'm proud we've been maybe a, a small part in the company's overall program. Um, Believe it or not, for the first time in, in my relationship, I got a chance to, uh, to to speak to the owner of the company, Forrest, and uh, <laughs> kind of uh, interesting conversation. But you know, uh, I think we were both just a little shocked. It's just we're just both extremely busy guys, and our past never crossed. So I'm very proud to have him on board, and we look for uh, another great year. Bobby, well, let me ask you one last question. It's kind of on a personal nature. Uh, being from central Pennsylvania, you're sort of equidistant from Philadelphia or in Pittsburgh, is that right? Kind of in the middle of the state? Actually, we're to a little bit to, uh, excuse me, we're a little closer to Philadelphia than we are. Okay. Pittsburgh. Okay. We're actually between Harrisburg and, and Philadelphia. Oh, okay. I know where that is. Okay. Okay. You know my friend Al Robinson? Yes, I do. Track announced for a lot of places, yeah. You know, Al's struggling. He, uh, I talked to him the other day, and by Monday, by this coming Monday, Al may be back home. You know, he's been in a rehab facility now for probably maybe 18 months or so. I didn't know that. Yeah, he had a, he had a stroke and fell, and that's why you haven't seen or heard of him, heard from him. Um, he's in Waverly. He's up in upstate New York where he lives. And maybe by Monday or Tuesday of this next week, they'll, they'll finally let him go back home. So, um, and, and if he can, if he can get to Daytona, I don't know that they'll let him go. But if he can get to Daytona, I'm sure he he'd love to come down and see you because uh, I know many times he and I've been together at, at an ARCA race somewhere, and he'd tell me after 20 laps, Gerhardt's got this thing won, and he's usually right. So <laughs> he's. He's pretty knowledgeable about what he does. He's a yeah, he's good, a pretty good guy. A good guy. Um, uh, yeah, I certainly wish him well. Our prayers are with him there. I mean, uh, I wasn't aware that. Uh, yeah, I think I think everybody in Pennsylvania, and particularly short track drivers and ARCA guys, and uh, you know people who've raced at Dover and other places, they they know Al Robinson pretty well. So, um, the name you certainly yeah. forget, and uh, and a person once you meet him, you'll never forget him. Oh yeah, that's absolutely right. Yeah. I call him Little Al, who calls me Big Al, so we go from there. <laughs> oh, my God. Sure right. that. That's it. That's I, it for me. I, I don't know if we can handle that, the Big Al and the Little Al. <laughs> that ain't that ain't answer either. That's 
<laughs> Pearson Robinson. <laughs> oh gosh. So, what? Uh, yeah, I don't know we're getting ready to wind him down. Just getting ready to let, go ahead and let him go ahead and go ahead and get them sponsors announced out on that list of yours, and we're going to let you go ahead and get out of here. Uh, you were breaking up again. I could uh, I could barely hear you. All right. Uh, just just uh, we'd like to thank uh, for you for coming on the show. Um, also, we'd like you to thank some of your sponsors, and we'll wrap it up here. Well, look, uh, uh, anybody that's listening, I I think I've been an instrumental part in, in making some of the, the high quality products that Lucas Oil makes maybe even better. We uh, we're a part of their R and D group where we we test a lot of their new new products and. Look, not all of them turn out the way they want to, but, you know, unfortunately, you've got to swing the bat to, to go forward. And um, I know they've taken a lot of what we've done and a lot of products that we've made and um, put them right into the automotive products, certainly the best out of the blue uh, lubricity company in the world. And, and uh, to anybody listening, if you're a big race fan, continue to buy them Lucas products. Uh, I don't know that there's another company in the country that is more diverse and and spends as much as Forrest does in all different forms of racing, from grassroots to what we do to, to now I see IndyCar and certainly their drag race deal. So uh, keep on them Lucas products. And, uh, and listen, my pleasure to be on the show, guys. Thank you. All right. We'll, thank, we'll talk to you another time, Bobby. Yep, anytime. Thank you. Hopefully after you win your ninth race in here in a few weeks. Uh, I hear you. <laughs> Have a good night. Thank you. Bye. Al, Al's got getting the high sign over there. He's yes. he's ready to go eat. You know how he gets. You know, I'll, my contract runs out at eight o'clock. <laughs> hey, you got a you got a slow pig running around here. He's gonna grab eat that I'm high. On overtime, man. He ate the high end off that sucker. <laughs> Asking for dessert over here. But I'd like to thank everybody for watching the show tonight, and we will catch y'all next week. See ya. Wow. Oh, we're still. Hey guys, I'm Daytona 500 winner Trevor Bain, and thank you for watching Let's Talk Races. Hi, I'm Robert Richardson Jr., driver of the number 23 Dodge Challenger for R3 Motorsports in the NASCAR Nationwide Series, and you're watching Let's Talk Racing. I'm Teddy Peters, driver of the number 17 Toyota in the NASCAR Camp World Truck Series, and you're listening to Let's Talk Racing. <laughs> driver of the 33 NASCAR late model 2011 Old Dominion Speedway track champion thank you for watching Let's Talk Racing TV I'm Sam Hunt driving 42 car I want to thank Let's Talk Racing Hi my name is Natalie Sather I drive the 94 K&N Lady Eagle Safety Wear Butler Built Seats Bell